I want to show you that there are several different types of compounds in writing chemical formulas. The first type is ionic compounds. They consist of metal plus nonmetals coming together, and you are exchanging ionic charges. The ending will be IDE. Let's take a look at an example that deals with ionic compounds. The first example here is barium chloride. What you must do is look at your periodic table to find the charge for barium and the charge for chlorine. Once you know those charges, that will help you in writing the formulas. So the first thing I'm going to do is write barium, which has a positive two charge. Chlorine has a negative one charge. Now, notice that the ending here is chloride, and it's chloride because once the name comes into play where you are combining and exchanging charges, the ending goes from whatever it was on the periodic table to IDE. Barium is going to pull that one, but in chemistry, the one is understood, so we don't write the one. And chlorine is going to take the two. And these are always written as subscripts, Cl2. So that's your formula for barium chloride. They are exchanging ionic charges. The next one, you have magnesium, which has a plus two charge. Fluoride has a negative one charge. Again, they're going to swap charges. Magnesium is going to take the one. And fluoride is going to take the two. And so this is your formula for magnesium fluoride. The next example that we're going to do is calcium oxide. Calcium oxide. Again, look at your periodic table and find the charges. Calcium has a plus two charge. Oxygen has a negative two. Now, the rule states in chemistry that when the charges are the same, you can actually let them swap out or disappear. When the numbers are the same, they cancel each other out. So I just simply get CaO. The next example, potassium nitride. I have potassium on my periodic table having a plus one charge. Nitrogen has a negative three. They're going to swap. Potassium is going to take the three, and nitrogen is going to take the one. But again, the one is understood, so you get K3N. Now, let's take a look at another type of example when it deals with covalent compounds. Covalent compounds. These compounds actually have non-metal and non-metal bonding. They use numerical prefixes, such as mono, di, tri, tetra, hepta, octa, and the ending is I-D-E. Let's take a look at four examples. The first one, I have carbon tetrachloride. This is quite simple. Carbon, the symbol is C. Tetra means four. Chloride is Cl, but I must rewrite that as Cl4. I bring the carbon symbol down, and I get CCl4, carbon tetrachloride. Let's look at the next one, dinitrogen monoxide. Di means two. The symbol for nitrogen is N, but I must rewrite that as N2. Mono means one. The symbol for oxide is O. So my final formula is N2O. The reason why we say monoxide for the last name is because mono means one, okay? You do not say mono for the first name. Like we didn't say monocarbon tetrachloride. We just said carbon tetrachloride. Mono is only for the first name. I'm sorry, for the second name. The next example, carbon dioxide. Everyone knows that. C for carbon. Di means two, 
The symbol for oxide is O, but you must rewrite that second part as O2. So my final answer is CO2. The last one, disulfur trioxide. Di is 2. The symbol for sulfur is S, but I must rewrite that as S subscript 2. Tri is 3. The symbol for oxygen is O, but I must rewrite that as O3. So my final formula is S2O3. Now, let's take a look at the next type of formula that you will come across, and it deals with multivalent ions. This is still under the same category of ionic compounds when you have metal plus non-metal elements. But whenever you have multivalent ions, multivalent means they have multiple charges. Copper, iron, tin, and lead are just four of the many examples that have multiple charges. You must indicate the charge in parentheses and state, it, state the formula with Roman numerals. Here's an example of what I'm speaking of. Here I have iron 2 oxide. Now that 2 in Roman numerals tells me which charge to use for iron because iron has a charge of plus 2 or plus 3. So I'm going to note that iron, in this case, has a charge of 2. Oxygen has a negative 2 charge. Again, I'm getting that number for my periodic table. Remember what we said on the previous slide. When the numbers are the same, they cancel each other out, and I get F. E O. The last example here, I have iron, Roman numeral 3, oxide. The charge for iron is 3. The charge for oxygen is negative 2. Remember, they swap. Iron picks up that 2. Oxygen picks up that 3. And so here you get iron 2, I'm sorry, iron 3 oxide. Remember, you look at the back end, the back end tells you what the Roman numeral should be. When you look at the back end, it indicates what that charge is for iron. 